Where did races come from? Why are there people with different skin colors? What is this? Different branches of evolution? Disease? Recent studies say that all modern humans descended from a common ancestor who lived only 6,000 years ago. There was simply no time for evolution. Then how could races arise in such a short time? We find the answer in a supernatural book, the Bible, and modern science confirms it. According to the Bible, all people living on earth are descended from Noah, his wife, three sons and three daughters-in-law who survived the flood that occurred 4,350 years ago. However, today on earth, there are groups of people called races whose external signs differ significantly. Many see this state of affairs as a reason to doubt the truth of the biblical story. Evolutionists argue that these groups could only arise as a result of separate evolution over tens of thousands of years. But this is a lie. Let's see what really happened. Anthropologists divide humanity into several major racial groups, Europoid, Mongoloid, Negroid, and Australoid. Today we know that representatives of any nation can freely interbreed and produce fertile offspring. This proves that the biological differences between races are quite small. If you take any two people from any corner of the earth, then the differences in their DNA will be only 0.2%. The Bible tells us that the descendants of Noah spoke the same language and stuck together. God confused their languages, after which people were divided into groups and scattered throughout the earth. Evolutionists believe that groups such as Aboriginal Australians or the Chinese have been separated from the rest by tens of thousands of years. But this is a blatant lie. Modern genetics methods show how variations in external signs could develop in just a few generations after the separation of humans. Let's consider, for example, the question of skin color. Many people believe that people with different skin colors have different dyes, pigments, in fact, we all have only one dye of the skin melanin. This is a dark brown pigment that each of us produces in special skin cells. It protects the skin from ultraviolet rays of the sun. If a person doesn't have melanin, like albinos, people with a mutational defect due to which melanin is not produced, then his skin color is very white or slightly pinkish. The cells of white Europeans produce little melanin, while those of black Africans produce a lot. Thus, the only significant factor that determines skin color is the amount of melanin. A person is born with a genetically predetermined ability to produce melanin in a certain amount, and this ability is activated in response to sunlight. A tan appears on the skin. A person with a low amount of melanin under the strong influence of solar activity is more prone to sunburn and skin cancer. Conversely, if you have too much melanin in your cells, and you live in a country with little sun, it will be more difficult for your body to produce the required amount of vitamin D, which is produced in the skin under the influence of sunlight. A lack of this vitamin can cause bone diseases, such as rickets and some types of cancer. Another example. The Asian cut of the eye differs from the European, a small ligament slightly pulling down the eyelid. All newborns have this ligament, but after the age of six months it remains as a rule only in Asians, Rarely the ligament is retained in Europeans, giving their eyes an Asian almond-shaped cut, and vice versa. In some Asians it is lost, making their eyes Europeoid. Each of us carries information about our own bodies, as detailed as a drawing of a building. This drawing, our DNA, determines not only that you are a person and not a head of cabbage, but also what color your eyes are, what the shape of your nose is, and so on. The genes contained in our DNA we receive from our parents. Genes are always paired, and we get half of the information from the paternal sperm and the other half from the maternal egg. It has been genetically proven that a range of skin colors from very light to very dark can occur in just one generation. If all people on Earth were now free to intermarry, and then for some reason split into groups living separately, then a whole host of new combinations could arise. Almond-shaped eyes with black skin, blue eyes and black curly short hair, and so on. Even today, within one group of people, we can see traits usually associated with another group. For example, you can meet a European with a wide, flattened nose, or a Chinese with very pale skin or quite European cut of eyes. So what really happened? God created the first man, Adam, who became the progenitor of all people. 
1656 years after the creation, the global flood destroyed all mankind, except for eight people. The Lord confirmed his commandment to the survivors, to be fruitful and to increase in number, to fill the earth. A few centuries later, people decided to disobey God and united to build the Tower of Babel. Up to this point, people spoke the same language. God put disobedience to shame by confusing the languages of men so that people could not work together against God. The confusion of languages forced them to scatter over the earth, which was part of the Creator's intentions. Thus, all groups of people arose simultaneously with the confusing of languages during the building of the Tower of Babel. After the flood and before the construction of Babylon, there was a single language and a single culture on earth. There were no barriers to marriages within this group. Therefore, everyone's skin color was the same. Certainly from time to time, people with very light or very dark skin were born, but they freely intermarried with the rest, and thus the middle color remained unchanged. The same applies to other traits, not just skin color. In circumstances suggesting the possibility of free interbreeding, obvious external differences do not manifest themselves. In order for them to manifest themselves, the population must be divided into isolated groups, eliminating the possibility of interbreeding between them. This is true for populations of both animals and humans, which is well known to any biologist. When God made people speak in different languages, insurmountable barriers arose between them. They were forced to move away from each other and settled in different places. Thus, God's commandment was fulfilled. Fill the earth. As people moved farther away from Babylon, they had to face new, unusual climatic conditions. Some went to the colder regions, where the sun shines weaker and less often. Dark-skinned people there were deficient in vitamin D, so they got sick more often and had fewer children. Consequently, over time, this group began to be dominated by people with fair skin. Researchers found that European Neanderthals, who are now recognized as full members of the human race, suffered from rickets, indicating a deficiency of vitamin D in the bones. It was the signs of rickets that for a long time forced to classify Neanderthals as monkey people. But it was a group of dark-skinned people who found themselves in a natural environment that was unfavorable for them. Conversely, a group of fair-skinned people who found themselves in a hot, sunny region would be more likely to suffer from skin cancer. Thus, dark-skinned people had a better chance of survival in hot climates. This is why we are currently seeing that northern peoples have pale skin and dark-skinned people live near the equator. But this is not always the case. Eskimos have brown skin, even though they live where there is little sun. Eskimos mainly eat fish, which is rich in vitamin D, so they survive. Conversely, native South Americans living near the equator don't have black skin at all. These examples once again confirm that natural selection does not create new information. If the gene pool does not allow you to change skin color, natural selection is not able to do it. There was no evolution. In the legends of most civilizations, there is a description of the flood that destroyed the world. Often these stories contain wonderful coincidences with the true biblical story. Eight people who escaped in a boat, a rainbow, a bird sent in search of land, and so on. The biblical story of man's origin is confirmed not only biologically and genetically, but also historically. 